A Hat in Time comes to us from, as you saw, Gears for Breakfast. Very suitable for, obviously, uh, Indie for Breakfast. <laughs> it is a collectathon, a 3D collectathon, very similar to like Super Mario, Super Mario 64 Galaxy. Uh, uh, probably Banjo Kazooie. Uh, basically, there's tons of games out uh, in the old like N64 days and a little beyond that that were essentially just. 3D free roam style games, and you essentially go through and try to platform your way around to collect as many things as possible. Uh, it had a Kickstarter back in like 2012 or 13. I backed it. Uh, I got, uh, I was supposed to receive a key or something, and I never followed up with that stuff. Um, so I did pay for the game, technically, but at the same time, I just recently received a key to review. So take with that what you will. <laughs> I paid for it, but I got a key anyways. Uh, and we're gonna take a look at it and try to be as objective as possible. I should also note that while I was working with Zam, um, I actually uh, had very uh, kind of a brief exchange with the with the uh, developers, where I was actually looking at possibly making a wiki for the site because I anticipated the game coming out much much sooner on PC. Uh, building a Hat in Time wiki. Uh, or a hat in time forums because I definitely saw the potential uh, in this game making it uh, fairly big, especially back in like 2013 or so. Um, and while I was doing that, I actually bought, uh, I believe it was a hat in time.com and a hat in time.net. Uh, and during my time at Zam, I was part of my job was to go through and, and uh, pick up as many URLs as possible related to certain games. So if a game comes out and, you know, maybe you know, we had Wowhead, for example, so let's just say like Rift came out, right? So we made Rifthead, uh, you know, uh, Diablo, we made Diablo DB, right? Well, that's not necessarily how that worked, but uh, essentially, yeah, my job was to jump in and grab the URLs related to the projects we wanted to work on. And so when I noticed that he hadn't purchased, you know, his own domain name, yeah, I think he had maybe hatintime.com, I'm not sure. Um, when I noticed he hadn't done that, I actually bought it and then reached out to him and just, you know, just gave it to him free of charge, of course, because Zam didn't need the money. Um, and <laughs> and so, yeah, that's this is like my history, my brief history with this game. Just kind of be all up front here. Um, but I'm super excited for this. I did play Mario 64 and that was probably the only like 3D collect like collectathon game that I really ever played. Uh, and even then, I didn't necessarily beat it. <laughs> I just played it like enough because I didn't have an N64. None of my friends had N64s. Um, so I played enough of it. Now, uh, real quick, the face here, I drew that. And one of the adventures you go through, you get a portrait taken and you're able to go through and paint on your face. I didn't realize it was going to be used for my save file. Uh, but there it is. As you can see, I'm 12% complete. Uh, I'm actually a little over 100 minutes into the game. And that is... Uh, Primarily because it doesn't take 100 minutes to get as far as I am, just so you know. Um, primarily because when I first got in, into Mafia Town, which is the first world I'm just going to show you guys, uh, I, <laughs> I spent the entire time just like jumping around and exploring, uh, getting a feel for the controls and just kind of having fun. Uh, this is your spaceship that you're on. Uh, this is Hat Girl. She has a number of different hats already. And each one has a different ability. Uh, if I if I left hold down left trigger with this hat enabled, it'll show me where I need to go next. Uh, and this is actually uh, this is not exactly where I need to go. Uh, this is going here and and yeah, use this thing. I don't necessarily have to do that. I can actually go downstairs to the other telescope and use that to select the next world. And I'll show you that. Whoop, okay, no, no, not through there. Where is it at? Through here. Oops. Let me switch hats real quick to my speed hat. Here we go. Come on. Oops. There you go. And this one will show that I can uh, go to the the Battle of the Birds. And Battle of the Birds is kind of interesting because uh, as you go through and you do... <laughs> da, 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 uh, as you go through and you, um, you play different levels, each one has a different theme. And the Dead Bird Studio was actually a stealth run. I mean, it wasn't like super stealth like you'd expect, like sticking around and hiding behind boxes and all that, but there was quite a bit of dodging uh, pats and all that, like just constantly. So, uh, so good on, like good on the developer for kind of including a multitude of different types of gameplay styles. Um, also, you'll notice that there is a dividing line here to show which direction you're leaning between uh, DJ uh, DJ Groove or something, the DJ on the right hand side and the big time movie producer on the left hand side. Both of them actually produce movies. Uh, and so the point is to figure out who you're going to support. Uh, and then, you know, DJ Grooves, it is DJ Grooves, there, there it is. Um, 
And so you have different themes for this. So this is Murder on the Aloe Express. This is a noir style uh, uh, whodunit style level, right? Which sounds strange, but that's basically what it is. Um, and uh, the Deborah Studio was the uh, was the stealth the stealth objective game. But I'm going to show you Mafia time because I feel like that's the one. It's the first level that you guys are going to come across. And two, it is uh, also the most lively and open that I've encountered so far of the two that I've fully explored that I've uh, I've explored. Um, your ship itself, though, you can kind of walk around and take a look at it if you'd like. Uh, there's a couple different rooms you can access. Some of them require a couple things in order for you to actually use them. Like, for example, I can't go in here yet. Um, unless I receive probably seven more of these time, uh, your little time capsule things that uh, that you lost. You had them all inside the ship, and then some idiot mafia guy comes up. He's banging on here trying to ask for a toll, and then he ends up sucking it all out. Um, you repair these things. This is for your relics that you pick up. This over here, this is a hamburger relic, <laughs> obviously. Uh, the hamburger relic, I actually, what you do is you you find the different pieces to it. So I found the bottom piece, and then uh, just as an introduction to the feature, they gave me the top part, and then you put them together on this pedestal, and then you unlock. What did I unlock for this? I just unlocked like two seconds ago, but my memory sucks. So anyways, yeah, you unlock stuff. <laughs> And there it is. It's beautiful. Um, I want to show you guys today the Mof Mafia Town and then the final Mafia boss. Just so you guys get a gist of just how the, the, the flexibility that they uh, they put into uh, the gameplay styles themselves. Um, let's see. Go over here. This is my cook. Oh, hey. Hope you don't mind me using your kitchen. I figured I'd treat you to some nice earth food since you're an alien and all. Say. Are you a steak kind of person or a veggie kind? Steak. Kinda? Is that so? Well, I hope you're not looking to cook up some earthlings anytime soon. Anyway, I hope my dish is ready before you leave. I want to see how great a dish I can cook using an alien stove. So there you go. Um, this I just 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 unlocked the cat. And that's where I got the second half of the hamburger. So this is, this is all the different uh, missions so far that I've unlocked on Mafia Town. Some of them I actually unlocked after going to the next chapter. Uh, so there is a bit of replayability in terms of like they want you to go back. Also, because it's a collectathon, you're going to have a lot of going back anyways because you're going to want to go through and collect like pawns. Pawns are this individual currency, uh, this little currency that's kind of floating around the world. Um, and you know you might want to go through and collect all those. Uh, I haven't actually done this yet. This is the uh, the time rift purple, and it tells you where it's at. And the other one it shows it's in a pipe. And so basically what it's saying is go back and then try to find you know the uh, try to find the the those items. And so let's just actually go back to Mafia Town here, because right when you start here. Also, you get to run it to the merchant, which is super important if he's still there. Here's a good look at Mafia Town. Beautiful. It really is actually a beautiful game. It's so great. All right. So, yes. Ta-da. First introduction to the game. I'm just going to try to avoid that. Hey, this is actually perfect. You get an introduction to Mafia Girl as well. Oh. So, these little things I'm picking up, these are the pawns. That's how you attack things, but you gotta watch out because they will retaliate. Boop. Keep on going. I'm not really worried about ch chasing uh, Mustache Girl right now. Yeah, these Mafia codes I actually have not figured out <laughs> what they do just yet. Oh, never mind. It actually it now works. Before, uh, you just picked them up and they didn't do anything. Two. Two. Hold on. Three. Uh, wait, there's gotta be more then. Maybe it's haven't picked up the last one. Kick this guy off the thing. There we go. Huh, let me see. Oh, how did I miss that? <laughs> Jesus, what an bear. I was just gonna mention how the platforming is tight enough that you can make difficult jumps like that, and then I mess it up. But yes, most of the time, <laughs> the platforming is super tight. Uh, but yeah, this might be, uh, that might have been my fault. Who knows? <laughs> Let's see. It's back up over here. There she is. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Again, I'm not necessarily interested in chasing her, really, because that's not the point of this particular run. It's just to show you guys, and also look for the different uh, the little time ref pieces that the picture showed. So I'm not entirely sure where to get those. We saw in the picture, but let me get a good view up here. I got a couple pipes over here. 
Don't mess this up. Don't mess this up. Don't mess this up. Yes. Oh, thank God. There used to be a bunch of pawns on here, uh, but obviously I've collected them all up. This requires a special kind of uh, hat that will turn you into an ice block. And then you go like boom and you launch yourself somewhere. And uh, you can imagine what you need for this. I can't jump up and grab it with my hands. So what else would you use on a hook? Perhaps some sort of grapple. Hmm. Anyways, uh, let's see. Going to make some distance here. Going to jump on this guy. Oh, it's already closed. Oh, it's, yeah, it's blowing up. Damn, okay. I was hoping I'd be able to use it again. Yep. Yeah, the ability to dive and then dive cancel. So you can actually make a lot of uh, mid-air adjustments if you need to. If you make a mistake or something, or if you're sliding too far, you could always dive cancel and then jump backwards or something. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. This is the... Uh, actually, there's nothing over here, so I'm not necessarily worried about going over there. But that is something I want. Oh, no, that's a... Hmm. You run around and you collect these yarns, and the yarns will actually allow you to make a new hat. Now, I've already made a few hats. Actually, I'll show you. Um, here, one, two, three. There's also a quick select like this. You can go through and select them. And I actually, I kind of like this design because it doesn't necessarily show you how many are available. Like, you know, I have no idea how many hats are in the game. But here, it only shows three, and it divides it into thirds. Um, let's see. No, 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 no. Hold on, left trigger to use it. Actually, I'll go and show you the others. Take this. Woo! There you go. And actually, probably use it on this here. There you go. What does it drop? Some pawns. Go make our way up here. Let's go and actually show you guys. Mustache girl. Uh, let's see. It shows you that's where she's at. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And that would end up being the last one for that set. Dive, jump, perfect. So I've not seen the uh, merchant. There's a merchant. There he is. This guy, he sells a bunch of random stuff. Uh, oh, he actually has some new stuff. Awesome. Uh, no more bonking against walls while diving. Hold X release for attack beam. Plug your ears. Now you can hear vague mumbling. Some of them are garbage. Uh, what's kind of nice, though, is whenever you attach a, uh, a pin, it shows up on your actual character, which I thought was kind of cute. Because <laughs> you can actually sit there and customize uh, and have like all these like, you know, your <laughs> flash. Look at this. It's like she's working at a diner or something. <laughs> uh, oh, yes. There you go. The umbrella. Uh, as far as I could tell, the umbrella is the only weapon you could get in the game. Um, and... I could be wrong, but it's just what it seems like from what I've read and what I've seen. Um, if not, awesome. Great. If so, mm, all right, fine. But at the same time, it's definitely not a game that you're necessarily focusing entirely on uh, on whacking dudes. They're going to walk up to start whacking people, right? Uh, you could also jump up and dunk on them. What the heck? Here, let's go save this guy here. We could dunk. They're good. And you can also do some whacking. Oh, watch out, though. There we go. You're free. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Sorry. What do you drop for me? Yes, I already have this yarn. This is the yarn, yarn that I used to make the hat. Took two of them. So now it just turns into regular yarn. And next time you pick up a hat blueprint of sorts, then you'll be able to build that hat. Now what is down here? Uh, that's another hat. Another hat yarn thing. Let's go and introduce you to Mustache Girl. Get some distance here. You go. Oh, where are you going? Come on. We've already played this game. I'm just gonna make your way up top. Hey you! Down there! Don't think I didn't see you stalking me! Us kids should stick together, not stalk one another. I mean, Mafia Town can be a really dangerous place. So what'd you say? Wanna join my little rebellion? Oh, by the way! Did you have anything to do with the junk falling from the sky? Yeah? Yikes! Looks like you've got a lot of cleaning up to do, huh? Tell you what! Come up here and I can show you where some of your junk landed! Alright. Yeah, she basically is pointing out, oh yeah, go stand on this trigger. Boop! And then it's gonna move this, and then you could go and jump over to her. We're not really worried about this right now, again. Spoilers and whatnot. 
Um, I'm gonna actually gonna back out, go back to hub, and I'm gonna show you guys the boss in this world. It's the first world, it takes you like 30 minutes or something like that to get through into it. Uh, actually, overall, it takes actually 30 minutes is actually very, very uh, low, probably more like a, an hour. Anyways, uh, so the, uh, uh, the, the game can be completed in probably around like eight to nine hours average, but the completionist side of it is going to take you significantly longer because as you've seen, there's lots of areas to explore. There's lots of places to go. There's just a lot of stuff. Uh, that you would need to, um, to, to, to go through in order to complete, you know, the game itself. Or to 100% the game itself. Alright, so down with the Mafia. Alright, so this should be kind of interesting. I think you guys will love this. It's a pretty good, pretty good boss fight, actually. I mean, nothing about this game is, uh, is incredibly difficult or anything. Um, it's really just, it's just about, you know, fun, I guess. <laughs> uh, there we go. Alright. So we can go inside. There's a lot of voice acting in this too, by the way, if you haven't noticed. I guess I'll just lie here for a minute. <laughs> One. Two. Oh, 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 oh. I'll go for the triple. Alright, so, yeah, lots of voice acting. And, you know, occasionally you'll have a point where, it's, where there's no voice acting in the middle of voice acting. So it's like, they'll say something and then they will just, uh, and then they'll, the next person won't say anything. It's really kind of strange, but... Overall, though, plenty of it. I was gonna try to get that pawn up there, but I guess it's not happening. I'm not worried about 100%ing the game, anyways. Yeah, like right now, like she, unless she said, "Let's go, it's showtime, baby." Well, it wasn't, it wasn't spoken, so it's like probably like 75% of the the lines are voiced. All right, here we go. Whoa, whoa. Okay, yeah, they're pissed. All right, so the first thing we gotta do is we gotta get into that, right? We stand on this, we see this. We try to dive at it, we can't get to it, okay? So, we need to find something to put on there. Uh, there might be something else floating around, but what I've found to use here, and back here actually, just so you guys can see, this is where the, where the key goes. All right, so, need the key. Whoops, <laughs> pardon me. So basically, we need to find something we could pick up <clears throat> and use as a weight. Not really worried about pawns right now. All these pawns actually regen, so... We'll take this. Some crawfish. Alright. This is Mafia Base. By the way, the uh, the writing and the characterizations of the Mafia are great. They're all look the same. They all have this, you know, extremely broken Russian style of speaking, and it's just hilarious. Some of the things that they say. I mean, let me see. Uh, let me just talk to this guy here. If small child get gambling problem, it's her own fault. Roulette <laughs> tables purely for looks. No gambling here. No gambling here. It's own girl's fault or whatever. So yeah, you can't go through here to get to the theater. So this is why we needed the key. So we'll just go ahead and just make our way back here. Boop. Now we're back in this room. And we have to get up there. All right. Give you a little taste of the uh, platforming. Checkpoint reached. Yeah, not worried about all the... The pawns, there it is. So there's the final boss in this uh in this world for this map. Let's see. And I don't think you can go through here. Nah, I think I already tried that before. Alright, let's go. Couple of ads. Well, when they turn red, you can't actually attack them. So keep that in mind. Also the same for bosses. I realized that guy was red when I slapped him. Uh, he must, the red must have wore off the second I hit him because trust me, you cannot hit things that are red. <laughs> when they're blue, they're actually uh, considered vulnerable. So here we go. So, it is you. Ever since you landed in Mafia Town, it's been raining with these magical hourglasses. You must be very lost, kid with the hat. <laughs> in the heart of our town, 
standing before the most powerful man you will ever witness. Everything you've ever owned belongs to me now, including this hourglass piece. If you want it, we'll have to settle it in true Mafia style. Lights! Action! All right. It is showtime! So now the camera is, has, oh, has shifted to a locked platforming, 2.5D platforming view. And we have a couple of phases to go through this guy. He's actually kind of a long boss considering, considering this game looks and feels like it's something that should be played by, you know, a child. <laughs> Oh, oh, there you go. Super charge. Oh, slap. Maybe we should get the uh, next phase here soon. Which is what this is here. Yeah, we have these things and we have to... There we go. Now we have the added, the added mob running across the the map while you try to juggle these things. Oh dang! Oh, so I, I lose the opportunity right there. Oh, and I didn't I didn't die fast enough, so I lost that opportunity there. <laughs> Come on, come on. There we go. So here we go. Should we another phase? Yes, here we go. Phase three. These things are tough if he actually does the uh, the shockwave. Oh, damn it. Oh, I get the ball. I get the ball. I get the ball. Here we go. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. <laughs> Not over yet. Ultra charge. Here we go. <laughs> go, 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 go. Yes. <laughs> Good. Call to charge again. And then, uh, <laughs> shit. Oh, go, go, baby. Go, hurry, go, 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 go. Slap him. All right. Mafia ball, take two. <laughs> okay, get on top. Oh, yeah. Slap. There it is right there. <laughs> Ta-da. And now you get a little dialogue, a little cutscene, talking with Mustache Girl. But I'm not going to spoil that for you because it's a pretty important cutscene. I'm going to return to the hub. <laughs> so that's it. So that's a hat in time. Uh, I mean, I, I could go through and show you guys probably another area. Um, maybe just for fun. Actually, yeah, I am going to show you one more area. I think if you're into uh, these 3D platformer collectathon games, you're probably already looking for the link to buy this, right? Uh, let's see. Hmm. Hmm. Let's go ahead and show you guys the bird BS. I'll go down here. Boop, boop. Oh, oh, by the way, there's also, also a lot of interactable items on your ship. Um, this is your bleeding edge top line audio device. Without it, you wouldn't be able to tune into all your favorite radio broadcasts like Acquaintance at the Table, Goodbye from Sunshine Town, or Two Brothers, and all, then also a third additional brother, myself. <laughs> Lots of areas. Some of them are just text like that. Others are actual interactable things. You have a computer that plays uh, mini games, but I won't spoil that either. All right, so I'll show you Deadbird Studio. This is the introduction to Chapter Two. Lots of opening dialogue. Obviously, a Hollywood-style set. These two are arguing, arguing over uh, production and also uh, who's going to win the the Oscar, the Deadbird. Oscar equivalent. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip the dialogue here just so I can show you guys the uh, how stealth works in the game. Actually, I said to go up top. Yeah, go up top. 
There's this guy here trying to sell me stuff again. And right here, actually. And this is kind of nice. So, down here, your camera is freeform, right? When you go up here, your camera is still relatively freeform. Actually, completely freeform. Uh, and then once you get over here to this point, the camera is now locked into a 2.5D position. So, it's kind of nice. Go up here. Trespassing 7,000. You will be billed for. Oh, oh, don't get up there. There you go. And here it is, those owls right there, or those birds, whatever, with the red cone in front of them, you have to avoid that cone. If you see it, then you'll get fined. Like this. Let's see, let me get him to trigger. There it is, ta-da, boom! And then you get back, <clears throat> and then you're disrupting studio recordings. It costs you money. So this is your, like, classic Metal Gear style of <laughs> sneaking around, except for a little bit faster. Uh, also, if I were to whack a camera here, I get charged. <laughs> so you have to avoid sets at all costs. Let's see if I, even if I just like kind of sneak over, right? Same thing, same exact thing. So you have to avoid sets. You have to avoid these owls. Uh, let me go and switch to, there you go. Get a little bit of speed. Slap this thing, get moving. And then here, same thing at the crawl underneath. <clears throat> You have a guard right here. You can slide past him. <laughs> Be all dramatic. Got a couple of guards here. Just follow behind them. Doot, 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 doot. Oh, who saw me? Nobody. Crap, crap, crap. Ah, did I make it? Oh. <laughs> oh, man. All right, we'll go a little bit farther, then we're out of here. No spoilers. No spoiler. Room. Oh, Jesus. Okay, we're good. Dang it. Then he get pulled back though. Oh, owl harassment. That's fine. Of course, I totally missed it. So I have to wait for him to come back. And then I could slap it again. Oh, no, come back. Slap it again. No, back. Dang it. <laughs> Trying to slap it and also time running across. Here we go. <laughs> Okay, we have a couple different ways we can go here. There's actually a secret area over there, but that's something for you guys to find later. Mm, do oh oh jump over that. It's gonna be come around the other side. Good. Destruction of property three thousand. Mm, do do. I forgot where to go from here. Oh yeah, down here. Ah. Oh good good good. Didn't fill the meter. Oh crap, do I have to slap that stupid thing again to go? Damn, I forgot. Oh! <laughs> That's the perfect solution! And there goes my ride! Ah, fuck it, there you go. Alright, so... <laughs> Alright, so that is... That's a hat in time. It's... It is... It's quite good. Uh, they have cooperative play coming. Uh, it's a post-release thing. <clears throat> split screen... Split screen co-op and online co-op, I should note. Uh, they are planning on supporting modding. I, I don't know exactly to what extent you can mod the game. Probably more hats at a minimum. At a minimum. Uh, the game is priced right now for pre-order on the website for $29.99, so you can expect it to be that much when you actually buy the game on Steam when it comes out when it releases uh, on October 5th, which you'll probably actually be seeing this on October 5th. So there you go. Uh, the game is, again, the game is quite fun. If you if you are, enjoy 3D platformers and if you're comfortable with 3D platformers, because it is a completely different style of, of platforming, um, versus like, you know, regular 2.5D or a 2D platformer, uh, then this game is totally for you. It does a really great job of keeping the controls tight. It's actually the tight the controls are, and I realize it's not saying much, much tighter than Mario 64. Um, so if you manage, if you manage to get around uh, Mario 64's controls, which again, in some levels it was there, it was fantastic. In other levels, it was uh, it was horrendous. <laughs> if you manage to make your way around that, then you'll definitely feel right at home on this tight walking and tightrope walking and doing all this nonsense trying to get around all these guys oh baby there we go i know i'm spoiling stuff I'm spoiling stuff no 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 oh busted so that's it that is a hat in time 
definitely check it out. Definitely check it out. And a reminder, yes, I received the key from the developer, but I also paid for the game. So do with that what you will. My name is Mike B. This is A Hat in Time by Gears for Breakfast here on Indie for Breakfast. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.